I got a lot of uh, OMG, this is awesome. Dude, what the f epic. I mean, stuff like that. Uh, one person said it changed them and they can't stop crying uh, because it's just so heart opening that they feel every bit of it. So yeah, um, my mom said it was absolutely beautiful. So, you know, moms. Again, nothing like this has ever been done before, all right? There are plenty of people who have changed the world. Uh, it just sounds so weird to say that. I mean, it, it's not, is it cocky? It's not, I mean, it's confident. I hope that it does. You know what, no. Because if everything is perspective and perception, then when you change yourself, you do change the world. You, ch you change your view on it. So yeah, it changes the world. I was changed creating it because it just does it. I made sure that it does it. Hello, I am Davion Dumon, uh, and I hope this message finds you well. I am here with Michael Thompson. He's the camera guy and my associate producer, also a stellar acting talent. We're not here to try to sell you anything. Um, we're here just to let you know that something exists. And uh, it's up to you if you decide to ignore it and remain ignorant, or if you choose to educate yourself and go on to educate others with it. Uh, so before we get started, a quick lesson. It's like see it, want it, take it, got it. Make sure them T's is cross, all of them I's got it. I plotted on how to make major moves. Oi! Great! It's just brilliant to see somebody I know! How are you? Oh, hey. How are you? You all right? We don't really know each other. Oh, sorry. It has been a long time since I've seen anybody. Honestly, you're a bit close. Um, is one step good? One step would be... Perfect. You got it! <sighs> Is it better? Huh? You alright? Huh? You all right? Are you alright? <coughs> Remember when I was the bastard? So that was a lesson in perspective, okay? What you think you see isn't always what you're actually seeing. There are little ways to flip perspective. There are huge ways to flip perspective, but just like everything else in life, you have a choice. You can decide how you want to see the world around you. You can decide how you want to let the things you think you see affect you. Once you determine how you want to let the things you think you see affect you, you can then choose how you want to respond. Because guess what? Everything that you're doing right there, all those mental loop-de-loops, everyone else is doing the exact same thing. You guys got to learn to play along with each other. All right? So when I talk about the power of words, um, I just mean how we choose to interpret them and the origins of some words. Otherwise, just like in life, how those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. If you forget where words come from, then we forget why we use them in the first place and we can continue using them to our detriment, okay? It's been said that, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, right? Well, words can chip away at you, bit by bit, over time, doing real damage. So, let's look at Stan. Stan's a real popular one, right? What does it mean? It's stalker plus fan. It means a really obsessive fan. But guess what? Fan is short for fanatic, someone who's already obsessive. But over time, people forgot this word was this word. They just thought fan was a general admirer 
of insert noun. So to describe an obsessive admirer, they combined it with stalker and got Stan and ended up creating the word that already existed. A big old giant loop-de-loop -loop for no reason. Why? Because someone forgot what this word meant. And then it spread to other people. Keep that in mind. Man, that was a really good protest. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. It was calm, uh, everyone was respectful, not one riot. Well done, protest. We, we did, did our part. Okay, I'm gonna need you to breathe through this one, all right? Try to be mindful of your feels. Retarded. All right, now, don't assume you know where I'm going with this one on my little uh, $4 tile board here. Um, okay, retarded actually has a clinical definition. All right, it just meant in its original use, uh, slow, or, uh, restrained, uh, held back. Um, when people used to say someone was mentally retarded, it just meant in the average span of thinking someone was mentally held back. And that was the word. It only took a few jamokes to walk around and start reducing people, you know, uh, by calling them a retard, okay? And that just spun the whole word out of control. If I say fire retardant, does that upset you? What'd you say about my mama? That, <laughs> no, it doesn't upset you. Why? Because you understand what it means. It means something that prevents, slows down, keeps fire from getting out of control, okay? Now, obviously that doesn't translate. I mean, there's no mental retardant. Um, actually, someone say it's the aluminum and deodorant, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so, now that we know that this isn't a bad word, it's this is a bad word when we add a in front of it and apply a real shitty context to it, okay? There are some people out there that are just like that. And changing the word, removing the word, only leaves a vacuum for some other word to take its place. For some ass clown to say, oh, look at this guy, he's special. So we're gonna stop using the word special now because some, some ass clown doesn't know how to, how to be nice to people? No. Um, then it just becomes gestures that literally lump all disabilities together. Seriously, how do you get out of that one? I'd ask you to comment below, but comments are turned off. Still, the only way to correct this is by people being less ignorant and less emotionally retarded. This comes with community awareness along with the general progress of society. Somebody got to do something. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Seed. Me did me part. Boop, boop. The next word we're going to do is palliative. Oh, such a good word. <clears throat> I think Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David even talked about it on Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, but palliative. Oh, the mouth loves it. What that means is when you treat the symptom of something, but not the cause. You're just doing something to make yourselves feel better, all right? But you're not really helping yourself at all. You're still dying, it just doesn't hurt as much, okay? Some word corrections that we make are palliative, okay? Even if only for the reason is shallow, palliative means treating the symptom, not the cause. A lot of changes that came from the civil rights movement were palliative. And what that means is it led to racism being suppressed, not eradicated. We did a lot of things to feel good and some changes were made, but mostly people just kept the racism to themselves and they didn't, they didn't work through it. They didn't try to figure out where the racism came from and you know, most folk with uh, this skin tone didn't mind. 
They just were happy not to hear about it and happy not to be restricted from doing certain things. Well, right now, we are about to repeat those same mistakes that were made in the civil rights era, okay? We're doing a lot of things to, to make people feel better, you know? Aunt Jemima, gone! Uncle Ben, see ya! Um, <clears throat> Eskimo pies, what? Land of lakes. Well, it's not really the word, it's more of like an image there, but um, everyone's doing something palliative. But does that mean that the company really knows why they're not doing it, or they're just worried about the bottom line? They're seeing all those dollar signs fly out the window. Well, some people don't care. They consider it small victories, okay? Well, speaking of small victories, <clears throat> You ready to wake up yet, Rip Van Daniel Snyder? Here's an idea. Okay, Arizona. Arizona had a Super Bowl that they were going to host. And Arizona did not have a federally observed Martin Luther King holiday. So the teams that were supposed to be in that Super Bowl threatened Arizona's bottom line by saying, we weren't going to play in your state unless you got a federally observed Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And you know what happened? They got the damn holiday. So how about this, NFL? Why don't you team up and just all decide, all decide, every team decide to not play the Washington Redskins in any game until they change their goddamn name. What's stopping you? Literally nothing. We are learning that nothing can stop you if you want it bad enough. So, you know, have a meeting. Don't play the Washington Redskins until they're not. Moving on. So since we're talking about racism, some of you might ask, is it possible to eradicate racism? Well, let's go out to the next word and find out. See what $4 get you guys, huh? Look at that, quality brown stuffs. That was my nickname in high school, quality brown stuffs. Ha <laughs> ha, deviant. This is another word that a lot of people have forgotten what it means, like fan. Uh, too often it's just used synonymously with um, pervert or uh, someone who's like evil, you know, just deviant. It just has that kind of word to it. Uh, fun fact, whenever you try to type my name uh, into Google, it heads for deviant first. So, you know, that's neat. Thanks for nothing, Google. Uh, <laughs> now, here's the deal. What deviant actually means is just someone who departs from usual uh, or socially acceptable behavior. But who decides what's socially acceptable? Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be one, the majority. The majority will decide what's acceptable, okay? Uh, two, it's going to be the educated few who convince other to come along on their side and they end up becoming the majority, all right? Um, who else decides what's socially acceptable? Three, uh, that's going to be those with money and power who create bullshit laws that redefine law-abiding citizens into law-breaking deviants uh, and, yeah, I'm talking about you, war on drugs. Now, I'm not saying that all deviants are positive, okay? I just needed you to know that not all deviants are negative. Some people who deviate from the norm are necessary for society, okay? Some of the best stuff we have is because someone made a choice to do something different than what everybody else was doing, okay? Uh, so, of course, some deviants are always gonna be negative, like pedophiles or rapists or people who use uh, cilantro. That joke is supported by science. Racists. Racists are always going to be deviants. The majority already knows that racism is a ridiculous concept, but there are those few that choose to discriminate and treat people poorly who have a different skin color or were born in a different country. That is definitely deviant behavior, and that is most definitely negative.
and always will be. However, there are those in the majority that don't know they have seeds of racism already planted or how they even got there. And I mean everyone. I can't be racist. I'm shut the f up and curb your brain lock. The types of major deviants will most likely always exist due to chemical levels in the brain. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? An unprevented child trauma. But the minor ones, those seeds most are unaware of, can totally be dug up and thrown on the compost fire. And that's what I've done. Basically, I developed an in-depth lesson plan for an experiential program that can be implemented remotely sans tutorial and or active guidance. And that's just fancy $10 words for the bio. I did it all for the betterment of humankind through education. And the link is down below and it's absolutely free and will educate enough people to fundamentally change the world forever. Nothing like this has ever existed. I checked, I made sure of it. I don't want to be a hack. And again, it's absolutely free. You know, unless you want to donate. I can't sit here and truly, truly, truly know that the power of one person is enough to change the world because one person leads to one person. One, those two people now lead to four people. It just keeps growing exponentially. Well, single drops of rain lead to a flood. So, hey, I'll take a dollar. Now, the best thing about put the all in ally is that it's for and helps everyone everywhere okay it's not just for the color of your skin it's not just for your sexuality it's not just for your religion it's for everyone once you're open and you start respecting the differences of people that's all you need what else is there i mean I might even start respecting people who like cilantro. Not likely. Bro, 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 check this out, check this out. Dude, your lighter doesn't even have a carbon footprint. Yeah, right? You know what that means? No footprint means the cops can't find me. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. So legit, so legit, so legit. No, 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 oh my god, oh, god, it's gonna be safe. Oh, yeah, 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 buddy, yeah, buddy. Oh, you're gonna be wicked pissed up. Oh. Black Lives Friggin' Matter! I did my part. I'm so sure that this would benefit everyone everywhere that I say, translate it. If you can translate it, feel free. Um, just reach out to me uh, directly, not in the comments because YouTube deviants and we'll work something out because you know, I'm not down for mistranslations, uh, you know, figurative, figurative interpretations. We all know where that goes. But <clears throat> next question. Davion, how do we know that it's not one of those conspiracist things? <sighs> Everything in it is backed up by facts, okay? Uh, the sources are included, so you can investigate further if you like. I don't just say something and put it out there. In the first piece, Ally, there's someone who is leading the charge, okay? And I am signposting your process through it. At the end, I created a data resource, the companion piece, so that I can cite all the things that that person talks about and then further the conversation. And I link everything. And I either say that it's a fact, I say that it's an opinion, or I say that if it's a merge of both. And there you go, that's how you know. Two, uh, the reason you know that it's not conspiracist crap is because it's unifying. Uh, now, of course, a lot of these things, people go like, oh, but this would bring everyone together if you would just do the research. <sighs> All right, so yeah, mine is unifying and there's no one to hold accountable. Meaning, when I put it together, how we got to where we are now, you can see that anyone you could put blame on was already dead. 
okay? There are certain things that are still going on that are a part of this system that we call the 1%, you know, and that the 99% try to fight against and everything, uh, sometimes the wrong ways. Like, sidebar, listen, it's cool you wanna tear down statues, but you're just gonna possibly do that same thing I talked about before with an erasure of history. Now, I'm not saying erase that history, I'm saying you're about to erase how those things got there in the first place. A lot of those statues came up because um, they weren't there after the wars that they were put up to supposedly honor. They got put up in direct response to the civil rights movement, like an answer to, like during Jim Crow laws, uh, army bases were named around that same time. So what you should do is maybe leave those statues up and like in Germany, put a brutal reminder of why that's a sh shitty person. Talk about what they did. Talk about how many slaves they owned. Talk about how many people they killed. Talk about uh, how much land they stole. Leave that statue up with a plaque of all their failings as a human being. And then the people who wanna worship them, who wanna support them, who wanna salute them, every day they walk by that, they can look at that plaque and make a choice to see if that's the side they wanna be on. But anyways, moving on. Uh, no one to blame, okay? This doesn't lead my piece, put the all in ally, doesn't lead, oh, by the way, that previous thought, that was all Michael Thompson. I'm just a parrot. I'm sitting on his shoulder right now, speaking his words. He's the man. I gave you don't play the Washington Redskins till or not, and he says, leave those statues up and spit on them as you walk by. A little bullseye, a little bullseye with all their bullshit. And spit on that. And give him a little meh. Anyhow, um, <laughs> but back to the thing. Good job, Mike. Well done. Do people call you Mike? Yeah, I never do, but I just wonder if it's one of those things like, if I call you Michael, I'm the jerk who's like, hello, Michael. Good to see you again. <laughs> I'm some snobby prick. Anyhow, um, put the all in ally. There's no one to hold accountable. We're not trying to blame anybody, okay? All I'm doing is through this process, I want the world and you to be better. I would love to see that happen in my lifetime. I never thought this could happen in my lifetime. It's, it's surreal to me. The whole process is insane, but I wrote all about it. You can actually read that. As you go through it, I'm right there with you. It's very, well, it's not stream of consciousness, even though this part is. So let's just fast forward. <laughs> Right now, some of you have to be wondering, um, which by the way, when you're on the internet, I like to say, don't wander around, wander around, you know? It's like reading a, like a dictionary or an encyclopedia, which is also something I used to get beat up about, but still, try wandering around once in a while. Um, <laughs> anyways, some of you might be wondering, Gee, Davion, how long is this gonna take? I don't know. Um, how long do you think it's gonna to take to create a fundamental change within yourself, making you a better human being, and then going on to dismantle the larger structure of racism? I don't know, three days? It's different for everybody, okay? In the piece, I say go at your own pace. Some people could probably do part one, I mean the whole section of one, put the all in ally uh, in a day. I mean, if you really want to, you can. Uh, it took me a long, longer to create it, um, but I, after I was done, I went through it cognitively, cognitively and tried to see how long it would take me. And yeah, it took about a day and a half just to sit with things, just to be for a little bit, um, to talk about it with other people. It, some people took a week, you know, because they did have stuff going on. It doesn't matter how long it takes for you to get through it. It just matters that you get through it. I mean, wouldn't you love to be closer to the stories that you talk about with your friends, you know? Um, those utopias or those, those lullabies or what's the thing that you tell when kids are going to bed? Stories, bed bedtime stories. <laughs> I haven't slept in a long time. Anyways, it doesn't matter how long it takes you. Just take the time. Don't try to rush it. Don't try to cheat it. 
I mean, I believe it was my coach who used to say, hey man, you're only cheating yourself, okay? You can run this mile or you can walk this mile, but I guarantee you what? You walk this mile, you ain't cheating nobody but yourself because you're going to finish the mile, so you ain't cheating me. Um, I miss that guy. Again, nothing like this has ever been done before, all right? There are plenty of people who have changed the world. Uh, it just sounds so weird to say that. I mean, it, it's not, is it cocky? It's not, I mean, it's confident. I hope that it does. You know what, no. Because if everything is perspective and perception, then when you change yourself, you do change the world. Now, you just have a choice. Educate yourself or remain ignorant. Decide.